the topic for this presentation is uh, intussusception. And intussusception is a pediatric uh, pathology that can happen. And it most, like, it most commonly happens between three months of age and three years of age. And most cases actually happen before age one. So what is it? Well, let's show a diagram and that will clearly explain what's happening. Well, first of all, let's look at this part here, this, this diagram that I've just boxed in. Well, here you have a normal intestine, perfect, completely patent, no problems. Then you have intussusception. And what's happening here is that one part of the intestine kind of uh, goes into another part. And it's uh, referred to as teles telescoping, where uh, one portion of the intestine telescopes into an adjacent uh, uh, segment. And you can clearly see that there. Now, this uh, eventually leads to uh, a lot of problems, uh, including uh, ischemia and perforation. We'll talk more about that later. Here's another diagram. Now on this side here, um, most commonly the portion of the the colon that's involved is the distal ileum, so the, the the pretty much the very end of the small intestine, and it telescopes into the cecum. And you can kind of see that there. Uh, this is the small intestine, and it's the ileum. It's the distal ileum, the very end of it, and uh, this is the cecum, which is uh, right at the sort of the beginning of the large intestine and then the telescoping is happening right in that location so remember that all right so let's get going here so remember this is really important because it can lead to ischemia because what happens is eventually uh, the this type of telescoping can cause an obstruction and the obstruction can uh, impair the blood flow uh, and that can cause ischemia uh, of the colon. Another thing that can happen is there can be a perforation. And if perforation happens, uh, then you're uh, in big trouble. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So let's talk about the basic symptoms. How does a child present with intussusception? Well, it's actually a very distinct uh, pattern of uh, uh, colicky abdominal pain. Uh, and the clinical vignettes really kind of uh, try to um, describe this. It's uh, initially uh, intermittent, okay? It's not steady. It's intermittent, uh, so maybe every 15 to 20 minutes the child will have this pain. And um, the pain will come and go. And then there will also be vomiting involved. Now, eventually, if there is ischemia, meaning uh, the blood supply is now cut off, that ischemia will lead to steady abdominal pain. So that this is a, this is a later sign. So hopefully you, you can diagnose it when it's in this stage. And you don't want it to go to this stage. Now the ischemia can also uh, make the child lethargic, lethargic uh, which essentially just means that the child is becoming tired. And, and then eventually you get uh, a mucosal hemorrhage where you start to bleed in, in, inside the colon and that will uh, show up uh, in the diagnostic testing as heme positive stool okay and then on physical exam the child will have stool uh, mixed with blood and mucus and stool that is mixed with blood and mucus is given this term current jelly stool now uh, some of you uh, that are preparing for licensing exams uh, know that there's something called like buzzwords or keywords or high yield facts and this is a very big one uh, yeah, this is often on licensing exams and um, what keywords or buzzwords are are, are something that uh, helps you quickly identify the diagnos diagnosis uh, based on a term and this term current jelly stool which is stool mixed with blood and mucus is a very big keyword for intussusception uh, so those are the symptoms. I want to also point out another key word that you'll find on uh, clinical vignettes uh, about intussusception 
is that the uh, when you do a physical exam, the abdominal mass that can be palpated is given a special term. It's called sausage shaped. Such sausage shaped mass, and and remember that that that's a uh, that's also an important uh, buzzword. Okay, well you you've got a child in the ER or most likely ER of course, and these symptoms are there. What do you do? How do you diagnose it? Well, the diagnosis is ultrasound, ultrasound of the abdomen. I I read a lot about this, and uh, there's two ways to diagnose it. There's barium enema, and there's ultrasound. And after doing a lot of reading, it seems like the the current uh, diagnostic test of choice is this one, the ultrasound. Now, but I would like to talk about barium enema because it's 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 tested. Well, it's something that you give the child, and what it does. And let's just go back to our diagram. What it uh, barium enema? Let's use uh, white is not. Well, I can use white. Okay. So you take the barium enema, and uh, you give it and it goes into the colon right and what it does eventually is it allows the physician when you do imaging to see the pattern of the intussusception because the barium kind of makes a um, uh, a classic distinct uh, pattern inside the colon that can be um, visualized on uh, abdominal imaging and uh, so that's that's why you're giving the enema to, to the child you, you're trying to diagnose it but what's interesting is that the barium eventually pushes the uh, colon in a way that it cures the intussusception it's very interesting um, the barium reduces the telescoped segments so you go from a situation like this to a situation like this after you give the barium. What that means is that the barium enema is diagnostic and therapeutic. You'll see this uh, written a lot, therapeutic, meaning it helps you diagnose it and also helps you treat it. But it's not that great because barium can sometimes enter into the peritoneum because you can. what can happen is this barium can enter into these small perforations into the peritoneum and cause peritonitis. So it's not considered the best uh, way to diagnose uh, intussusception. The best way is really just the ultrasound. All right, well, you've done the ultrasound and you know you, you, you pretty much know that it's um, intussusception. So how do you di how do you treat it? Well, you give another type of enema that does not have a risk of perforation, and that type of enema is an air enema, is used to reduce uh, the intussusception. And um, about 75 to 90% are reduced uh, with this air enema. And if you're still unsuccessful, then you go to surgery to surgically cut out that segment of the colon that's uh, affected. Okay. So we'll finish off with the clinical vignette and here we go. A three year old boy is brought to the emergency department by his parents because of a 24 hour history of intermittent generalized abdominal pain. The parents tell you that he complains of the pain for 10 minute episodes and during these times he refuses to walk but then he spontaneously returns to his normal activities. This occurred eight to nine times yesterday. Today the symptoms occurred more frequently and were associated with three episodes of non-bloody, non-bilis emesis. So the parents brought him into the hospital. There is no history of fever, constipation, or soiling. On exam, the patient appears tired and has mild, diffuse abdominal pain. He has GUEC positive stool. His pulse is 125. Study most likely to provide a diagnosis is well at first when I read this I thought oh, it doesn't really give me much information um, the child's got abdominal pain how do I diagnose this and they're not even asking for diagnosis they're asking you what's the test that you use so 
first you have to figure out what's the disorder. Well, we obviously know it's intussusception uh, because that's what this presentation is about. But how do you arrive at that diagnosis? Well, like I said, a lot of it has to do with the pattern of uh, uh, or the presentation of the symptoms. So initially, the pain was intermittent, which is what happens in tussusception every 15 or 10 minutes or 20 minutes. And then later, um, you see, this happened intermittently about eight to nine times. And then later, which is about a day later, the symptoms became more frequent. And that's what's happening here is, if you remember, there's probably some ischemia. That's what's happening. And you know for a fact that there's ischemia and mucosal hemorrhage because GOAC positive stools. And that pretty much means that there's blood. Uh, interestingly, they did not mention current jelly stools. If they did, then it would be very, very obvious. Uh, current jelly stools. But they do mention that there is blood in the stool. So how do you diagnose it? Well, interestingly, they don't mention ultrasound of the abdomen. Um, if they did, then you, that would be the answer, but they do mention barium enema. And um, if the, both of those were present in the vignette, if both ultrasound and barium were present, go with ultrasound. But since ultrasound of the abdomen is not there, the best choice to diagnose intussusception is a barium enema.